Well, absolute congratulations uh, to the matric class of uh, 2023. An outstanding performance indeed. We did hear a bit earlier on today that we were expecting uh, some good news. So absolutely good news that we're hearing here tonight. An overall pass rate improved from 80.1% to 82%. 0.9%. That is what uh, the class of uh, the matric class of 2023 achieved. 55 of the 70 districts uh, performed above 80%. That's part of what we saw. This is also the highest pass rate ever that we're seeing. Mathematics also impressive. That pass rate unprecedented. Huge indication perhaps of the quality uh, that is in the system. In 2022 it was at 55% to 63.5% now in 2023. Well this was last year of course. The Western Cape always been in the top three. Now at uh, number five from what we see Limpopo unfortunately for a, for a second time uh, in a row at the bottom. We'll talk to the minister very shortly to find out what could have gone wrong there the free state 89.03 percent kwazulu natal 86.36 percent gauteng 85.38 percent the northwest at 81.63 percent the western cape 81.54 percent the eastern cape 81 0.42 percent and Pumalanga 76.95 uh, the northern cape 75.84 Limpopo 79.54 and uh, we had just about uh, over 897,000 learners who wrote their final exams uh, last year and I want to bring in now uh, the basic education minister Angie Motecha who's just joined us. Minister very good evening to you. Thanks indeed for your time. Thank wow. You. Thank you very much. This looks Alan. good. Congratulations to yourself, to the parents, teachers, learners, and of course, the class of uh, 2023. How did we get here? This is great. You know, I think sometimes when they say adversities also bring the best out of you because it's this current cohort, the next yeah. cohort, we're really at the storm of COVID. And because of that, we drew in everything that we possibly had and fortunately in the schools i mean if you moved around in the township saturdays these kids were going to schools in the evening they were going to schools and support even from the private sector we're just pouring lots of support but fortunately for 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 us also they were children were, were, were willing to 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 also put their 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 their, their best foot forward and i think it really did pay uh, dividends it did. really worked out yeah uh, the Free State uh, still on top uh, and unfortunately Limpopo, Limpopo at the bottom. Uh, what are some of the challenges that we're experiencing in Limpopo? What are the problems there that you've picked up? It's second time in a row now. No, but they're, they're the highest improved. Yes. At 74, at 7.4%. Mm. So Limpopo is the highest improved province with very good passes. The perennial problem in Limpopo is, and I did say to the minister that we have to go to Skukun. It, it just is their, 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 their challenge or their Achilles heel. So something in Skukun is just not doing well. I'm told it's about just society sometimes not valuing education. It's just the whole culture of just being relaxed and not taking education serious. But we will be going there, and, but I know it's around Skukun. That's what has been there. Tropic. Yeah, a critical time now. Uh, you know, these learners uh, will go to their schools tomorrow and know exactly what they got. Um, an increase in uh, a bachelor's passes. But this is without a doubt a nightmare for the tertiary uh, education system. You cannot divorce basic education and uh, uh, higher education. What communication are you having amongst yourselves, both basic and tertiary, to deal with <coughs> some of these aspects? You know, the other problem, it's a systemic problem in our country, that every learner, we seem to prepare them to go to Tisha, which is not an international trend. You look mm. at Germany, only a third of the kids go to universities. You go to France, only a third. So because we don't have a diversified curriculum and diversified offerings, young people find themselves forced or wanting to go to university, which is a problem. So we have to change that. That, that part systemically as a country then you'll be able to cope with that because you 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 you, you don't need all your young people go to academic streams even your brightest can do some of high level technical and 
and vocational schools, that's the biggest problem. Yeah. And until we, sol we solve that part of the system, we will not be able to, to, to deal with expectations. And I mean, some of these kids are 14 years, so yeah. all their parents want them to, do is to, go, to continue in school. Yeah. And the only way to continue is a tertiary. That would require a diversified curriculum, though. Mm. Uh, just yesterday, when we were out in Kharongo, mm. you spoke about uh, some of these learners. Uh, if they want to go to BMW to go and uh, uh, learn some of those skills. Uh, other countries around the world seem to be focusing uh, uh, their learners on acquiring the much needed skills mm. because the learner of today or, or the work environment of today is very different yeah. to what it was 10 years ago. We need diversification in that curriculum. No, exactly. And that's what I even spoke about, about the three stream curriculum. Yeah. That already in terms of people's talents, gifts, interests, we should not channel all of them to want to go to FET and therefore go for academic stream. Some of the bright kids can really be some of our greatest te technicians, can, be, can do vocational courses. And that's why in the curriculum are div diversifying. It's new. It means we have to really, it's, it's, a, it's going to be a long haul, yeah. but it's a very necessary journey. Mm -hmm. We don't have adequate teachers trained in vocational and technical. We don't have enough resources because they are very expensive. Mm. As much as they are very necessary, they are very expensive. It's much more cheaper to teach kids math and science and history in the classroom. Mm. But if you are going to take them into a vocational or technical stream, then you have lots of consumables and it's a very important, a, 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 a expensive exercise. So gradually as a country we are moving in that direction because we have no choice but to move in that direction. Yeah, we're also looking at uh, uh, how the rural schools would perform. Um, I know a lot of work has been done. Uh, some programs have been put in place to assist. Uh, it seems like those that's bearing results. Uh, improvements uh, in KwaZulu Natal, Limpopo, the Eastern Cape. Uh, we're seeing some great improvements in those rural provinces. And in townships, actually. Because yeah. what is pushing our marks now is investment in your rural areas, in your township, and in your informal and poor areas. Because some of these areas, your urban areas, are already, there's nothing to improve. They're already in their 100%. What keeps on giving us results it's investment in those areas which were underserviced in the past. Mm. What would you say to criticism that there is so much focus that is being put on the metric results? And the reason why I mention this, I think it's a 2021, the polls report. The polls re report indicating that 81% um, of grade four learners uh, can't read for comprehension, even in their own languages. Now that is concerning. Is there too much focus on should we be building from a much earlier stage? No, because you even have to understand that in context. That's why I say, right. unfortunately, when we expect, uh, uh, when we release the PILS report, we didn't indicate some of the constraints that we have right. as a country, let alone our past, mm -hmm. that even in those participating countries, we'll be, have been the only country, except for Morocco, where children learn in a language other than their own. Right. And that's why we're changing our language policies to say kids until a later phase, they have to study in their languages so that they can develop conceptually. So that pills has helped us to identify also what are fault areas and language is one of them mm. that we we, we, we we not using the right tools in terms of teaching. ECD, that's why we're ramping up on ECD. Most of the schools, uh, countries to compete with, I was telling the president that in Finland, Kids go to an ECD at nine months. Mm. Our kids go to school at six to seven years. So we want people who have been in the system for nine years to run with people who are only arriving three years in the system. Mm. So there's no way we're going to win. Unless we ramp up on ECD, unless we deal with the language policy in education, as, unless we resource our schools, we will complain forever. But because we don't want to complain forever, we're giving lots of attention to ECD that our kids have to come aid in the system. There must be radiation, remediation early. There must be stimulation. So that by the time they come to school, they're ready for school. Yeah. But as our children come to school at the age six, seven, they're not even school ready. In three years' time, we say they must go and compete with kids who have been in systems for almost nine years. Mm -hmm. So it's not workable. So ECD, language policies have to change if we're going to change our fortunes. Mathematics is also where we're seeing unprecedented, uh, uh, you know, a pass rate there. Is this an indication of the quality within the system? 
what I feel from even the results when we look at the match results that we have improved 17% was where mm -hmm. to say what has gone right this yeah. time. And it's been deliberate and concerted effort from the bottom. It was <laughs> mathematics it's actually if, if, uh, 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 you have to cascade you have to start early you have to get your, your, your numeracy skills quite and if you start late at grade 10 11 there's very much there's very little you can do to, yeah. to be able to get that right so the focus that we've been having now is to really focus on your foundation phase that's why we go to pills there's nothing that forces us to go to pills yeah. we go to pills to identify where the weak points mm. are we could stay with all I mean <laughs> we were there only two countries in developing world, which when in Africa it was ourselves and Morocco. Participating. Yeah, participating. Yeah. And in the world there are 44 countries that participated out of almost 190 something countries of the world. Mm -hmm. So we went there to go and benchmark ourselves, but not to go and compete with your Canada's and your Russia's and your Finland's, yeah. but it's to really identify what more do we need to do to be able to be at that level. And we went there knowing that we're not at that level. We're mm -hmm. going to benchmark. Speaking to you yesterday, um, we still do not have uh, some of the adequate learning materials at our schools. You begged us to give you 10 days and you I said know. we should come to you in 10 days. And also, where is the process now? Uh, I know we just spoke yesterday, but where is the process now? Can you assure uh, schools that at least in 10 days, all these schools will have the adequate learning material, the nutrition uh, as well? Yeah, from the reports I received last year from the schools in terms of what, what has been ordered, what is outstanding, the indications were that orders were made. The only difficulty now with vandalism, of, uh, with the vandalization of our schools, we're not able to deliver materials, otherwise we're going to find food stocks stolen, they break mm. ins. So it's only in 10 days that we're able to f sort ourselves out that books must be in children's hands not be in our storerooms because it creates problems for us mm -hmm. and that's why we're appealing for these 10 days to say give us 10 days to receive our deliveries and make sure that books are in the children's hand and food comes only for two days when the children are, when it's going to be cooked yeah. and when children are here but if it's going to stay in our schools and waiting for children to arrive it creates unnecessary problems for us Minister, I'm afraid we've run out of time, but thank you very thank much. Thank you very indeed. much for having me. Thank you very much and, uh, for having me. And indeed to the principals and the teachers who've all done, done, uh, done the hard work. No, and have. of course to all uh, those uh, matriculants of uh, 2023, a sterling, sterling, sterling uh, a pass rate there. Congratulations uh, to all of them. Tomorrow I think we're going to see quite a number of them rocking up at these schools, trying to get their results. And all the best to them certainly who will be uh, furthering their studies. So we're going to take a short break. Uh, in fact, I think we're wrapping the show, isn't it? I think that's what we're hearing from our team. Well, we're wrapping the show. Congratulations to the matric class of 2023.